Hi guys, welcome to Siemens online video tutorials. The most awaited lesson of PIDs are here now. And in this series of section, in this series of video, we'll understand about the control system and we will see the types of control system, which are generally P control, PI control and PID control. So we'll study these three controls in details using the factory IO software, which is very interactive. And we'll be using a liquid level control system to understand the, the effect of P, PI, and PIT. So this section is going to be very interesting. So let's start with understanding control system. All right. Now, if you know a system is uh, consists of input, a process, and output. Okay. So this could be any system related to your daily life, your domestic, you know, household purposes, or if you go to industry, you will see a process and that process has some inputs and then process gives some outputs based on the inputs. So this whole thing is called a system. All right. And many a time we control a system. So let's take an example. Uh, let's take a process of a temperature control. Okay, we need to control a temperature. So the input to a temperature control will be a reference value, the value which you want to sustain in your process. And the process output could be a heater if you are going to increase the temperature or a cooling device, a cooler maybe, if you want to decrease the temperature. So a system will have a value from the input as a reference value. Then it will have a temperature, which, which temperature needs to be controlled. How? By heating or by cooling. So this is a simple example of a system with inputs and outputs. This is how it works. Now we have various types of system and sometimes we need to control the system. So to control the system, we have very simple type manual control system. It says when you have a system with human interaction, to control the output that's a manual control very easy to understand if you see this guy over here this guy is looking at a pressure gauge which is a controlled variable it's uh, indicating some temperature and if there's temperature problem or if the temperature increasing beyond a point he will actuate or deactuate a valve so its pictorial description is here you see this operator he is noticing the temperature and based on the temperature it is opening and closing the valve so he knows which temperature he want. So based on that, he will control maybe the fuel going inside the furnace, which is generating some heat and this is getting controlled. So this is a very simple example of manual control system. And it is generally used in a very basic processes where you don't have to worry about the feedback, where you don't have to include highly sophisticated control system. You just employ a guy and you just get your work done. But make sure if there is a guy involved, it's highly risk because if the guy is not focusing towards the exact value required, your process parameters will change. All right. So let's see one of the basic example in factory IO on liquid level control. This is just to make you understand yeah, how the system works. So we have the system here. This is called liquid level control. And these are my inputs inside on this panel. And we have some outputs here like we have a, a discharge wall, this is my output. And then we have a fill wall, this is also my output. The input to the system is, system is these buttons, all right? So what I'll do is I will just go and press start. So when I press start, you will see we have an output which is filling. And if you see here, this is a scale. This is analogous to what an operator was seeing on the gauge. So I have a scale here. So if my boss says, if my supervisor say, hey, Rajvir, just get the level 200, 100 centimeter. So what I'll do is I will just keep an eye on the scale and I press the button. And I will just notice, okay, now the level is increasing. It's increasing. And when it reaches 100, I will stop the button here. But just because of the delay in the system, because of the lag, it goes above 100. So I will say, oh, this is not 100. Let's go and decrease it. So I will press the discharge until my level is 100. So this is more or less 100. So that's how this is just the human interaction. You know, I have to be on the panel all the time to maintain the level. Now, let's say some someone is using this liquid. So liquid level decreases. So I have to go back again and increase the level up to 100 because my supervisor says maintain it to 100. So this 100 is my reference value. So I, so I need to continuously check the level and operate the buttons based on the required value. So this is like a manual control system where I need to be there. Okay. So let's go back. 
So after manual control, you might be imagining or you might know already, there comes an automatic control system. And we also call it a feedback control system. In feedback control system, we have a value coming from the output going to the input. Okay, so if, you, if your input knows or the controller here knows what's the output, it can change the process again. Okay, so generally to get the output, to get the feedback, we have some sensors which are installed here. All right. Now, if you if you ask me what is a sensor for for temperature level, so we have we have in the output output is a furnace which we saw in the manual control. We have temperature sensors. Okay, temperature sensors installed, which is giving a value of temperature back to your input. And here we have a set point. So this set point will be matched with the temperature sensor value. And the process will again actuate or deactuate the heaters or the cooling devices. So let's get more detail into that. This is the system model of a feedback control system. So initially we have, you can say, a reference input. This is also the set point, the required set point. Let's talk about a liquid level because we are going to have a practical demonstration on that. So we need a liquid level, let's say, at 50% of the tank. Okay. 50% or in our tank, it is 150 centimeter. Okay, we need a liquid level at this height. So this is the input which we'll give to, this is, this is a mathematical summation. And if you see this part, this part is a controlling device. Okay, so we give input of 150 centimeter. And let's say currently my output is at zero. So zero will come here and this is minus. So 150 minus zero is 150 this will go as an error. So this 150 is an error because the error is difference between your output and your input. Okay, let me change my pen. So the error of 150, the error of, oops, sorry. The error of 150 goes into the controller. Now the controller job is to amplify this error and make a controller output, which is also called manipulated, manipulated variable, which goes to the plant. Okay. Now controller knows how much output he needs to generate with the error of 150. So when the output is generated, plant parameters changes and the level start increasing. So level increase to 10 and then it goes to 20 and goes to 50. And when it goes to 150, the feedback goes back to 150 and then the error goes zero. When the error goes zero, the controller input is zero, the controller output will also be zero in case if you don't have any disturbances. If you have a continuous disturbances, you will have error all the time. And if their error is there all the time, controller output is there all the time to sustain the value of level at 150 centimeter. Okay, to understand that, to understand this uh, process, let's take an example of factory O liquid level control. So I'm going to show you a PID control in factory IO. So I'm going to use the same environment. Okay, so let me reset it. And I'm going to open the logic for PID. I don't need to save it. So we have a logic here. That's my PID logic and you don't need to you don't need to worry. We will understand how to make logics in Siemens TIA. This is just for explanation. So I will go back to my factory IO. All right, now here we have a start stop. This is a main start stop. I will press start to start my process. And now the process, if you see set point, is zero. All right, and if you wanna see the level, I'll just activate the level here. Level meter is zero. So the output is zero because the set point is zero. And the error, which is set point minus level is zero, so everything is zero. Now I want I want to maintain the level at let's say 5.8, which is sorry, 0 0.6, which is like you can see it's very less. Okay, let's increase it. So I want my level at 53%. Okay, so this is going to actuate my fill valve to decrease the error or to fill the tank. So you will notice here proportionally this will reduce because the error is going to be reduced here. Look at that.
So fill valve is getting closed because we are getting close to our set point. So we have reached 5.3 and that's why fill valve is stopped because the error is stopped. Now I can go to 7.5. It will again fill the tank up to 7.5. So this is a feedback control because process knows the feedback from the level meter and it automatically controls the output. When the error is zero, the output is zero. These are our outputs. So this, this is same, so this will go back to zero. All right, so system is stable. Now if I want to reduce the value of the height, if I want to have a lesser liquid in the tank, I will go back and I will go back to 2.3. So in this case, my drainage valve will be on or discharge valve will be on from here. And you can see the level is decreasing. And it will also decrease proportionally. You will see the discharge valve getting off proportionally as the error is getting closer to set point. You see, so when this goes to 2.3, my discharge valve is off fully. So this is, this is the PID control in which you have a very accurate feedback and you can control the process with a very stable loops. All right. So this was like the basics of manual and automatic control. Now, why is it automatic? Like if I need 3.4.3, I will just make it now and I will just hang around here and there. Okay. I don't have to be next to the system. I can take care of other processes. If there, are, if there are no presses here, but just for the explanation. And when, I, when I'll come back, I'll say, hey, okay, the level is there because we have an automatic loop. Again, I can do the set point and I can take care of other processes. Okay, so this is the benefit. You don't need a person to be in front of the system to continuously monitor that, to monitor that, okay? So this, is, this was about automatic control system and with the feedback control in which we are getting the feedback with a level meter. So this was about the basic of control system. In the next lesson, we will talk about on of type control system and we will generate a logic in Siemens TIA in SCL, how to make a logic for on of control or two position control. This will be our next lesson. So see you in the next video.